Do you know what you need to do to get into Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine? That's the topic of today's video. I'm going to go through a ton of information, including admission statistics, matriculant demographics, required courses, and more, so you'll know exactly what you need to do to get an acceptance letter from Johns Hopkins. <laughs> A quick intro from me before we get started. Hi, I'm Nadine Evans, an admissions associate at BMO Academic Consulting. BMO is North America's leader in academic consulting. We study and research admissions, and we love helping students achieve their academic and career goals. In fact, we've helped over 20,000 students get into their dream program. Before I continue, make sure that you subscribe now to our channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And the cool thing is, we actually give away $50 Amazon gift cards to our subscribers. Okay, so let's get right into how to get into Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. The info that I'm going to cover is based on the university website and the medical school admissions requirements website at the time of this video. But always be sure to check statistics and requirements with the school's website or the MSAR for the most up-to-date information. Johns Hopkins is located in Baltimore, Maryland, and it was founded in 1893. They are a private university that is consistently ranked among the nation's top medical schools. They have an overall acceptance rate of 3.9%. So let's get started with what you need to do to get an acceptance letter from Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. Firstly, I wanna talk about their mission statement and their values, which is essential information because it tells you what they're actually looking for and in turn, what you need to include in your application. So their mission is to improve the health of the community and the world by setting the standard of excellence in medical education, research, and clinical care. Diverse and inclusive, Johns Hopkins Medicine educates medical students, scientists, healthcare professionals, and the public, conducts biomedical research, and provides patient-centered medicine to prevent, diagnose, and treat human illness. Their vision is to push the boundaries of discovery, transform healthcare, advance medical education, and create hope for humanity. They say that together, we will deliver the promise of medicine. So Johns Hopkins has four core values that are important to go over. The first is excellence and discovery. They say, be the best, commit to exceptional quality and service by encouraging curiosity, seeking information, and creating innovative solutions. Number two, leadership and integrity. Be a role model, inspire others to achieve their best, and have the courage to do the right thing. Number three, diversity and inclusion. Be open, embrace and value different backgrounds, opinions, and experiences. And number four, respect and collegiality. Be kind, listen, understand, and embrace others' unique skills and knowledge. The curriculum at Johns Hopkins is called Genes to Society, and it includes scholarly concentrations, intercession weeks, clinical skills, and development and horizontal strands. This quote on their website is very important, and it discusses research at their school. This is what it says. Research is the lifeblood of Johns Hopkins. Scientists and physicians alike, as well as students they mentor, pursue knowledge to identify and answer fundamental questions in the mechanisms, prevention and treatment of disease, in healthcare delivery, and in the basic sciences in accordance with the School of Medicine's mission. Research at Hopkins is highly valued and can range from two month electives to a year or more of leave for extended study. The scholarly concentration programs offers the following five areas of study. Firstly, basic science. Number two, clinical research. Number three, ethics and the art of medicine. Number four, history of medicine. And number five, public health and community service. Okay, let's get straight into admission statistics. In the most recent admission cycle, just over 6,000 people submitted a primary application and almost 4,300 submitted secondary applications. 856 applicants were interviewed for an MD spot and 71 were interviewed for an MD PhD spot. Overall, 256 were accepted into the program and 120 matriculated. So now let's go into the demographics of the matriculants. The most recent entering class has 70 matriculants that are women and 50 that are men, with 21% being underrepresented in medicine. The median MCAT score is 521, with matriculants scoring on average between 130 to 131 on each section. 
The median total GPA and the science GPA are both 3.95. 74% of all matriculants have science or math backgrounds, and individuals come from roughly 25 states across the US. And then there were also some international matriculants from Canada, China, Ghana, Greece, and combined, the most recent entering class can speak over 30 different languages. So it's a pretty impressive group from all different areas. So let's look at the pre-med experience of the first year class. So basically what people's background was when they applied to Johns Hopkins. So as I mentioned before, research is highly valued at Johns Hopkins. In fact, 98% of all matriculants have research experience. Approximately 83% have community service and volunteering experience that isn't related to medicine, and 92% have community and volunteering experience in the medicine and or clinical field. 92% have physician shadowing experience, and around 30% have paid medical and clinical experience. So this really gives you an idea of what kind of experiences you should have in order to be competitive. So now let's go into the prerequisites for Johns Hopkins. Number one is college biology with lab, eight semester hours. Number two, general chemistry with lab, eight semester hours. Number three, organic chemistry with lab, four semester hours. Number four, biochemistry. Now, in this case, the lab is not required and you need three or four semester hours. For five, you need 24 semester hours in the area of humanities. So this would include things like sociology, economics, philosophy, and the arts. And then the social sciences would include political science and anthropology and or the behavioral sciences, which would be psychology, for example. Two of these courses need to be writing intensive classes. Number six, you need calculus and or statistics. So six to eight semester hours. And then lastly, number seven, you need general college physics with lab and you need eight semester hours. Now, there are a few recommended courses that aren't required, but obviously it's a good idea to have these. So there's statistics or epidemiology, at least one semester or four hours they recommend. And then there's principles of genetic at four hours. It's also worth mentioning that if you're applying and you haven't completed your biology within the past four years, then it's recommended to take an additional course in mammalian or molecular biology. Keep in mind that online courses are not acceptable as prerequisite coursework, but they do accept AP credits. All right, so how do you apply to Johns Hopkins? The application process consists of a primary and a secondary application, which are sent through AMCAS. AMCAS opens in May and applications must be received no later than mid-October. You'll need three letters of recommendation and you can submit up to six letters. For MD-PhD applicants, you're required to submit five letters. Interviews begin in late August and once your primary application has been verified by AMCAS, you'll automatically receive a link to the secondary application. And the secondary application is required and it costs $100, which is payable to the school itself. The MD and MD PhD secondary application deadline is the very start of November. So let me just go a little bit more in depth into the AMCAS timeline. So AMCAS opens in early May, and at the end of May or early June, AMCAS is open for submissions. In mid-June, applications are first transmitted to schools. In July, admissions offices begin sending electronic links for secondary applications. In August, admissions committees begin reviewing applications, and interviews begin in late August. Mid-October is the deadline for the primary application, and the start of November is the deadline for the secondary application. So as you can see, those two are very close together. So you definitely wanna be submitting your primary application early, as soon as possible in June. You don't wanna wait so that you're so close to that secondary uh, deadline. Then in mid-December, it's the first round of decisions sent to accepted and rejected candidates. In late January, the second round of decisions are sent to accepted and rejected candidates. In February, admissions committees are finishing that their reviews of applications and the interviews also finish in late February. In early April, the final round of decisions are sent to accepted and rejected candidates. Mid-April, applicants must narrow down their acceptances to three medical schools only. And at the end of April, accepted MD applicants have to choose a single medical school to attend and they have to let go of any other acceptances that they have. And finally, in May is when the school will be going through waitlisted applicants. 
So now let's move on to interviews. John Hopkins interviews are in the traditional interview format. So they're one-on-one -on -one interviews and they do also offer some interviews over Skype for out of country applicants. Now, John Hopkins also has some non-academic standards that they consider when selecting applicants. So basically, other than just academic excellence, they also look for candidates that can demonstrate the following. Number one, leadership. Number two, service, compassion, and humanism. Number three, diversity. And number four, the ability to work in a team or as part of a team. Now, the cost to attend Johns Hopkins is the same for in-state versus out-of-state applicants. So the total cost is $83,567 annually, and this breaks down into roughly $56,000 for tuition and fees, $22,000 for fees classed in the other category, so that includes things like living expenses, and $4,000 for health insurance. Approximately 81% of all students receive financial aid at Johns Hopkins. Now, finally, I've included a link for you in the description of this video to the admissions office where you can contact them for specific admission related questions. Okay, so that'll wrap up another one of my videos. I hope that you found it helpful, so please make sure that you subscribe now to our channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. And don't forget, we do give away $50 Amazon gift cards to our subscribers, so make sure you subscribe now. Well, that's everything that I have for you today, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.